Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you an Oath of Conquest level 20 build in Baldur's Gate 3. This is a really fun mod subclass that just got added for console, so I thought this would be a great time to cover this. Now the Oath of Conquest actually has abilities all the way up to level 20, and they're very fun to use. So I'll be covering all of that in this video, and this mod is made by Havsglimt, so yeah. This is incredible. They also made the Circle of Stars Druid, which I hope will be coming soon to console as well. This mod gives us the Chosen Adversary, so you can mark an enemy with the focus of your Zealous Pursuit. You get advantage on attack rolls against the target, and uh, whenever you hit them, they may become frightened, which is huge because later on we can make it so that frightened creatures have zero movement speed, locking them in place for us to take them down. And uh, this also can... Uh, be ended at the end of their next turn so it's not like at the start of their turn where a lot of mods or a lot of effects can happen so his is huge we also get the oath of conquest tenets and i know there's going to be questions on this but this is the same as the oath of vengeance tenets so if you go and give take the hag's hair or fight the tieflings that are holding lazel at the start of the game that's an easy way to break it so don't do that <laughs> now as for our ability score strength's going to be an important stat for us as is charisma so we want to have a be at least 16 charisma and we're going to have a nice blend between strength, dexterity, and constitution. So you can go like 14, 14, something like this could work well. Um, and then go 12 with your constitution. Uh, you can also go and dump your strength and go all in on dexterity if you want to use something like Falar Aluve, the weapon, and then put the rest of the points in your constitution. Uh, so there's a few different ways that we can go about using this, and then you could go like 10 intelligence. So if you're dumping strength, you can even use strength potions and dump your strength. That's what I'll be doing for the purposes of this. But if you're not doing that, we can go, obviously, and take some of the points into that. So it would look something like this, and then maybe one more point there. So yeah, I'll just go back to this and take out our strength, because we're going to dump our strength and go dexterity for a bit higher initiative, which you'll see why. Now, with this build, I'll be going over the gear at the end of this video, so uh, you can also see that, and the combat to show off how to do it. At level 2, we get our Divine Smites, big damage for us. Fighting style, defense is great, or you can go with the two great weapon fighting, which will reroll our weapon damage, so that's another really good one for huge numbers. Pick which one of these you prefer. And for our spells, it's always a good idea to have um, things like, I mean, Thunder Smite's nice for pushback, uh, Searing Smite. I like just to have this, all three of the smites here. Command is probably our most effective spell that we get, however. And then we can also go, if you have the mistress spells, you get things like Ceremony, which should be useful early on in the game, Divine Favor, or even Bless, which is really nice. The, the uh, Paladin doesn't get a whole lot of different spells, so we're going to get pretty much free choice of taking whatever we want. At level 3, we get the Guided Strike, which is huge, giving us a plus 10 attack or bonus to our attack rolls. So if we take Great Weapon Master, we're going to be very accurate with that. And then we also get our Conquering Presence, so uh, possibly cause all nearby enemies to become fearful of you. Affected creatures can repeat a saving throw at the end of its turn, ending the effects on a success. So you can f create fear in the opponents. We also get a free casting of uh, commands we can take that off. And we get Armor of Agathus, which is really nice. So uh, yeah, we can take something like Ceremony instead of Command, because we're already going to get that. Compelled Duel is alright too, you got some decent options there. Now at level 4, we get ourselves another Lay Hands Charge, and we get a feat, which I think it's best to go higher Dexterity or Charisma. Charisma if you're using Command a lot, Dexterity if you want to have a higher initiative and higher armor class and medium armor. And at level 5, we get ourselves an extra attack and level 2 spell. So, get some fun ones here, and we'll be taking things like uh, Branding Smite, which is good for preventing targets from turning invisible in Act 2. This is really useful. We also have ourselves Aid, which can be great. Lesser Restoration, which can remove poison or disease from a target. And uh, Magic Weapon, plus one to attack in damage rolls. Or the Forceful Weapon, if you have Mistress Spells, which uh, makes the weapon magical, gives a plus one to attack in damage rolls, and deal additional force damage, which is actually pretty nice. We'll take that. And then Lesser Restoration, I guess. The, <laughs> the spell options that we got aren't, like, incredible, but uh, we do got some decent ones, so... At level 6, we get ourselves the Aura of Protection, granting our Charisma modifier to saving throws, which is huge. That's why we want to increase our Charisma there. So we get a nice plus 4 to that. And uh, then we also, at level 6, get our Aura of Conquest. So when a creature is frightened of you, its movement speed is reduced to 0 while in the Aura. And if the creature takes Psychic Damage equal to half your Paladin level. What's nice about that is uh, you can use the Resonance Stone to increase that damage. And then for the next level really take whatever you want cure wounds shield of faith there's a lot of concentrations we only got an option for really one of them and at level six or level eight we get another feat and we will take a alert feat for a plus five to initiative which is really nice or you can increase your charisma and have a plus five to saving throws and have a higher spell save dc for your 
spells like command. And we also have hold person. I guess I forgot to mention hold person. And we also get spiritual weapon at a previous level. Now at level 9 we get our level 3 spell, so we get fear, which is actually really useful. So this can make the enemy fearful, which we have a lot of benefits whenever the targets are fearful. They get disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, and they drop their weapon, which we can pick up, making them pretty useless. Now we get some really great spells here, so you can take off some of the previous ones. So we got like Crusader's Mantle, which can give your whole team radiant damage. I like Elemental Weapon. If you have the Snowburst Ring, you can add cold damage to your bow or your sword, and then attack, and you'll create ice surfaces below the enemy, which is a really synergetic way to use this. We also get things, if you have Mistress Spells, you can get Spirit Shroud, which uh, calls for spirits to fight nearby enemies, and within 3 meters have reduced movement speed. When you attack a nearby creature, deal an additional 1d8 Radiant, Necrotic, or Cold Damage, and prevent them from regaining health points. So this is really useful, because we can add Cold Damage, similar to Elemental Weapon. This is also a Concentration. We got Revivify here, Blinding Smite, which does 3d8 Radiant and potentially blinds your target. Blinding Faith, you willingly blind yourself in exchange you receive Holy Blessings and Power Radiant. Weapon attacks to deal an additional 2d8, or 2 to 4 Radiant damage and heal allies within 9 meters for 1 to 6 health. What's cool about Blind Faith, you can use the uh, Shar Spear of Evening to be able to reduce or remove the blindness from yourself. We also got create food and water, which is cool for if you have camp if you have spell slots left at the end of your um, you can whenever you go to camp you can use these for camp supplies. It's pretty nice. Crusader mantles all right. Warden of Vitality. I mean, <laughs> we're mostly going to be using spell slots for Divine Smite. And at level ten we get another lay hands charge, and we get R of Courage, which prevents us from getting any type of um, fear on ourselves. So I guess we'll take blind blind faith there. And then at level 11, we get ourselves the Improved Divine Smite, which gives us melee weapon attacks, deal an additional 1d8 of Radiant Damage. And then we get another level 3 spell slot, which is great. We'll take some random spell there. Divine Smite again, it's going to be our major, major damage dealer. So, we get further spells here, and uh, we can, I guess, take whatever there. You could also add in the Warlock and take Pact of the Blade. I'm going to go all the way to level 20, because there's actually some great effects here. We'll take Alert for our feet. But the Warlock gives us three attacks if you're not in honor mode, which is massive. But here we get level four spell slots. So we can get Dominate Beast, and uh, every time the Beast takes damage, it makes a Wisdom saving throw. So we can take over some Beast and Stone Skin, which is takes half the damage from all non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. It's okay. And uh, we don't actually get to choose any level four spells, which is kind of unfortunate. But um, yeah, we're, again, going to be using our spell slots for Divine Smite. So that's not a massive massive deal there so you can really take whatever you want in terms of spells like we get great choices but at level 15 we get our scornful rebuke so those who dare to strike at you are physically punished for their audacity whenever a creature hits you with an attack that creature takes psychic damage equal to your charisma modifier which is plus five and we can also push that higher if we use like the birthright hat so plus six and then we get ourselves another feat here at level six so i think this is actually the best time to take Great Weapon Master, so what this will do is give us a free attack as a bonus action if we take out a creature or get a critical. And then we get a minus 5 to attack rolls with plus 10 damage. So we can use our Guided Strike to make sure that we still hit, and we get extra 10 damage. Now we also get level 4 and level 5 spells here. We get Cloud Kill. So if you have a Necromancer or a Dread Overlord Warlock, you're laughing, because you can drop this down, it won't hurt their zombies. We also get Dominate Person, which is pretty useful, because uh, you can take over the mind of a creature there. And uh, we'll just go ahead with those spells there. At level 18, we get ourselves the Aura Protection 10 meters, so increase area for our spells there, our auras. And then at level 19, uh, we get another level 5 spell slot, and we get another feat. So if you got the Expanded Feats mod, you can see there's a lot of really cool ones that you can add in. I'm not going to use those because not everyone has those mods, and I don't want to make it so that someone uses or someone gets upset that I don't use what they have. Uh, we also can use Savage Attacker so we can reroll our damage dies, which is nice. Uh, but we already have the Great Weapon Master, so we could go with something like that. Um, there, I guess there's a lot of choices, like Actor. I guess Actor wouldn't be super useful here, but we could have taken that and not used an Ability Score Improvement. We can take up our dexterity or strength as well, or constitution for overall survivability's sake. And at level 20, we get a huge benefit here with our Invincible Conqueror for 10 turns. Harness the extraordinary martial prowess, magically become an avatar of conquest. You have resistance to all damage. You can make an additional attack as part of your regular attack action. And the number needed to roll a critical hit using your melee weapon is reduced by one. Huge. So, yeah, you get pretty much every single spell here. So, uh, 
Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> you got crazy options. Again, we're mostly going to be using Divine, Divine Smite, but we do have some other options here. Um, so if you really want to use some of them, there's other things. So we're always going to have our auras up, if at all possible. Mask of Soul Perception is nice, but you can also use the Birthright Hat, which will give us a plus six to our uh, saving throws to all allies within 10 meters, which you can see is a pretty big aura there. And uh, with that, I guess we'll also get our aura of courage boosted up so that we can protect our team from being fearful not that that's very common that it happens but then we also got invincible conqueror there and we have conquering presence which is really nice against the enemy which hits in a huge area um so that's good if you're out in combat i'm just looking for our so one thing that i recommend that you do is whenever you get your character here i I would recommend taking whatever weapon you really like to use here. So a two-handed weapon works best. I just put that on there. But you can actually take Mark of Heshker or the Staff of Spell Power, take the Arcane Battery, and then go with an upcasted Armor of Agathas on yourself, which is really nice. Um, so this one, I guess it doesn't actually, <laughs> it's upcasted, but uh, this is good because this will give us some extra health and uh, also give us cold damage on attack. So... You can use this really on any spell to upcast it prior to going into combat. I think that that's a nice way to go about using it. So um, we also got ourselves blessed if you wanted to cast that. And uh, what's nice about this is this just gives us some extra temporary health. So yes, it's only five extra temporary health, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> so two-handed weapon is the way to go for us here. But you can also use a sword and board if you want to go that way. Sword of Chaos is pretty fun for the heal on, a, on attack, which is great. Sethin's great because you can make yourself um, reduce a character and also get a spiritual great axe. It's another option. Um, then you can also go with obviously like the sort of Baldurin or Duelist Prerogative for an extra reaction if you want to take like Sentinel. But we're going to go with Baldurin Giant Slayer. For the most powerful version of this, that's why I took the strength up to 27 with a potion there. And we have 22 Charisma, so we're pretty maxed out in terms of stats. Our Divine Smites are going to hit like a truck. Now, typically what we want to be using for gear is I'm going to, I just have some, um, a different armor mod on there, but you want to use heavy armor if possible, or since our dexterity is pretty high, we can go with armor of agility, which will give us 24 armor class, which is higher than the armor of persistence. However, it's tied for if you were to take the Helldusk armor there. So I'm going to go with the armor of persistence because I think that that one works pretty well. There's also a die for this mod that lets you use the Oath of Conquest die. I like the Helldust Gloves for increased chance of landing our whole person and command. And they also kill her sweetheart, ring of protection, and later greater health. But really, whatever you prefer. Hellrider Longbow gives us a plus three to initiative. However, you can use Gaunter Mail because this is going to give us haste. So we can go pretty hard with our Invincible Conqueror and haste prior to starting combat. So typically what this is going to look like in terms of combat, I'll show off a little combat guide here because this is a fun class to use. Our reaction is the plus 10 to our uh, attack roll. So if we're missing, you can pr basically make it so that you hit your, your target. We also got our spiritual weapon here. I recommend using the Maul because the Maul can actually daze targets, which gives them disadvantage on wisdom saves, which is hold person. So that becomes pretty nice. Now, what we're going to typically want to set up with, we already got our uh, armor of Agatha set here, but we also got the ability to um, go into combat with like our... Invincible Conquer, which I'll show off after this combat encounter, so we'll just get into things right here. And uh, I'll just we rolled a decent initiative here. I'll get in close, and we got hold person for nice crowd control, so this won't let us target them. <laughs> that sucks, but we also got command here, which possibly won't let us target them. Now, we can command grovel them, but the, that's in the way there. Um, so you also get your spiritual weapon here, which is nice and I mentioned you want to summon in the mall Because you can daze a target with the mall, which is really nice for setting up your whole person We also got our our fearful uh, Conquering presence here, which can cause fear on a target 32% chance of happening use it our channel oath, which we only have one of so per short rest I'll just show you what this looks like. We made them fearful perfect. So they have fear So when we get in close then uh, it's pretty much bonk time. So I guess there wasn't much to do on that turn. I'll just let everyone stay back and just do their thing. They're fearful, so they're running away. <laughs> it's awesome. So we can get in there with our spiritual weapon and deal some damage. Now, what's nice about this class is you get the ability to take out uh, targets and then just get on a get on a roll with that because Divine Smite can be very damaging. And we'll just see them. 
So we got our Maul here, which is nice because we can go ahead with our Concussive Bonk here, which will possibly daze the target. And uh, you dazed him. Perfect. So what we can do now is I'll show you some pretty cool maneuvering. Uh, we can get out into an area where we can lock things down. And what we're going to want to do is we even got a free cast of this. I guess that won't work. Yeah, I guess this only lets us do it on one person, which kind of sucks because typically hold person allows you to upcast it. But whenever they're dazed, they have a less likely chance of uh, succeeding on that. So you can see they're 99% of hitting a whole person, which we do have a pretty good spell save DC. So that is something there. And I ran out of moving speed. That kind of sucks. <laughs> I was trying to show off this. I was hoping that it would let us do multiple. But yeah, we can lock down a whole person, which is really useful. I guess that's only 95%. We'll try to hold person her. She saved on a 5% chance of that happening. Where the spiritual weapon really shines is the fact that it can't be blinded. So you can actually use this to go around and attack anyone that's set up like darkness like that. And that broke the concentration. So very useful in situations like that. Um, I also did use Gale to hold person there just because I had terrible luck. So now we can go around and do our favorite divine smite, which can actually add a lot of damage here. So it caps out at level four. That's typically the highest we want to be using this for. So. Um, these all have the ability to reflect light damage, which is not ideal to show off on this. If I hit them, I'm probably going to get taken out because they reflect light damage. But uh, we can go with like a thunderous smite, which can do pushback or any type of wrathful smite, uh, which will add a little bit of psychic damage there. Not the most ideal encounter to show off a paladin strengths, but um, yeah, we can go ahead here. This will break our spear trap, which is fine. Psychic damage, bonk, and then we got our extra attack here, so... So let's go ahead with that and that took him out so that was one down and pretty pretty decent <laughs> and then since we use our bonus action we don't get our bonus action attack that's fine so since we also can't use a divine smite on them or we're going to get yeeted they're fearful which is huge because they're just running away we have hold person on someone so that's where this really shines is we got the ability to crowd control really well and uh, I guess we'll just go with like a thunderous smite and knock her prone or potentially frighten her as well, which would be super useful. So we'll go for that. Executioner, we were going to miss and we critical. That was huge. <laughs> so uh, that made things a lot easier. And it took us out for whatever reason. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, yeah. And we'll just get in here and do a regular old weapon attack just to get some extra damage in. That took them out, so... Yeah, I'll now show off what the Aura of or Invincible Conqueror does. So a great combination is using Haste on yourself from the Gaunter Mail Bow and then going with the Invincible Conqueror here. This is really cool, kind of a rage effect. And then we'll go into turn base mode and go ahead with our big Divine Smite. So level 4 Divine Smite should do a ton of damage. And they won't reflect it. That previous combat encounter is terrible for showing that off. Critical hit, we took him out. And then we'll show off what this does because we got our Invincible Conqueror, which gives us that higher critical hit chance. And uh, we're going to be dealing a ton of damage. So you can just go around smiting everyone. And uh, that just makes this a very powerful build. So I guess we'll just go with a level 3 smite here, see what that does. Bonk. Yeah, that took them out. This is very powerful, and then we can go ahead, I might get attacked by the Netherbrain. I didn't, so I can Divine Smite them. Oh, I should have upcasted that. Critical block. Booyah. And then we got our good old trusty ma the Maul there to be able to uh, land a whole person more likely. And uh, we got our extra attack here, so we can go ahead and hopefully hit a critical so we can throw Divine Smite. Boom! And that took out another target. We don't have another bonus action to do another damage. And I got turned by the mother brain, so that sucks. <laughs> uh, this combat encounter is really tricky because, yeah, it causes some issues there. So you can see here I'm dealing psychic damage to attackers. So even if they throw and do two damage to me, I'm still able to deal damage to them. So that is huge. What's nice about this is you can take them out with psychic damage just by getting attacked. So... We weren't hit for that much, but uh, we were able to deal quite a bit of damage there, so that's really nice. So you're probably wondering how I got myself into this situation, but as you can see, I've only lost like one health or two health, so that's pretty good, all things considered. And this is what we got for them, is some big, old-fashioned Divine Smite. So level four upcast can pretty much bonk them 
out of existence. That hit some fire, so that actually took out another one because I have the unstable blood there, <laughs> which is really great. Um, so, yeah, go around with your divine smites as much as possible. Knowing what amount you need to take out the target is super useful. Obviously, dice rolls come into effect, but you can see there we're thrashing them out. We unfortunately lost our haste too with command getting uh, losing that there, but uh, you can see we also have our great weapon master extra attack, so we can go around and bonk, and then our extra attack here for another extra attack. Yeah, this is pretty unstoppable. That just took out five or six enemies there around me. So that's what the Oath of Conquest Paladin can do. Extremely useful and very fun to play. So let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.